Welcome back to DXB Today, where we're all about style, and today we're going to be talking to some fashion aficionados. But for right now, what's coming up on the episode today? Oh, look at Lane. Lane is heading down to the vision industry to create his eyewear from scratch. That's not all, Louis. We've got the city's fashion gurus giving us the lowdown on the autumn winter fashion trends and a special performance by Danny Aridi, who joins us right here in studio. Fashion and entertainment. It sounds like an ash kind of episode. Exactly. You <laughs> like you two are just happy to be here. You put the ash in fashion. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a good one. Good. Didn't see that one coming. Uh, but we've got an amazing menswear designer who's coming on the show who's a dear friend of mine as well. What is your take on fashion? Faris, what are you feeling these days? What is your jam? I was always anti-fashion. Why? Uh, I was against fashion. I was like, it's just clothes. No. Well, does it matter? Does it really matter? But the, uh, the more I'm growing and the more I'm aging. Yeah. Um, I can tell that fashion doesn't have to mean what some people think it means. I think it means expensive, designer, brand names all over the clothes and everything. No, it can just be an expression of your personal style, your personality even sometimes. What do you think? Well, you know, I've just been reading up on, on this. Apparently there's going to be over 25 fashion shows in Dubai this year. Wow. Over 25. So it's really a growing industry here. And it's good that there's an avenue for another kind of industry to just blossom here in the UAE. And I know you've got a lot of fashion designer friends, Ash, don't you? Um, I, I don't have any designer friends, but I personally love fashion in case you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> Do you? I'm, I'm, a bit of a, I'm a bit of a compulsive shopper. I enjoy fashion quite a bit. And uh, honestly, um, it keeps changing so much. If I was to describe my style, I wouldn't know where to start. And also the show is not about me, but I'm really looking forward to some <laughs> of the fashion content. It should be though, that we are going to cover a little bit later on on the show. How was Ed Sheeran over the weekend? Ed Sheeran made me cry. Mm -hmm. He made me laugh. He made me dance. He made me rethink my life. It was it was good. It was good. Yeah. And I'm sure you did give it a few thoughts. I mean, what you were wearing that night, right? I really did not. No, I didn't. <laughs> really? I was going. Whole, to I was trying to connect the whole fashion thing there. <laughs> if you actually want to know what I was wearing, I was going to a Barbie movie themed party right afterwards. Oh, so what? I had to go wearing my flowery shirt. <laughs> no, one sec. They're still doing Barbie movie themed parties. What can I say? Gosh. It's enough already, guys. Stop it now. <laughs> I'm curious about what our guest co-host has to say about this. Let's find out who she is first. Hi, everybody. My name is Irene Steele. I'm a fashion stylist and content creator, and I can't wait to see you all in studio very soon. Irene will join us right here in just a few seconds. But first, Lane went down to Vision Industry, the first experimental optical store in the region to create his own eyewear piece right from scratch. Let's take a look. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but I have a massive collection of sunglasses. I mean, we live in Dubai, it's a sunny country. Plus, you've got to look good. So it depends on your outfit and there's all sorts of different reasons why I've got many sunglasses, right? So I've been told about a place called Vision Industry that can actually customize and personalize sunglasses and prescription frames just for you. Let's go check it out. Feels good, but does it look good? Hello. Ciao. 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 Oh, Italiano. Italiano. Eh, hey, can we talk in English though? You have to. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked man. Thank you, man. Now listen, I've heard so much about the vision industry. I think you're doing amazing work. It's something that I need personally. So tell me more about the concept. How does it come together? So here we can find the best shape that suits you. It can be from scratch, from your idea and inspiration, and we can create from zero, from a material that we cut, we do all the elaboration, that you can have your personalized, personalized customized frame. Fantastic. So you do the measurements that will fit my face frame? Yeah, sure. yeah exactly. It's oh, okay. something very tailored, specific, that's something that you want. And uh, yeah. And then the you process. have different, uh, then we go through the different materials. Yeah. Um, we, and have the color. Around, we have around 40 colors that very, it's premium quality came from Italy. Uh, we have from unique color, transparent, solid, Havana, so it's the best opportunity for you. Bruh, so sign me up, man. I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm yeah. in. Sign me up. Very good. Okay, cool. So we go and get the measurements? Yeah, of course. Let's All go. Right. Cool. <laughs> Wicked. Okay. So, so this is the, where the magic happens. Exactly. So here we are. So we start to take the measurement of your face. So we start with the, find the best one, the angle of the nose and the 
the fit of your head. Oh. So let me find some proper take the measurement of your head. What size is it? I'm, I'm quite interested. What size is that? Yeah, actually? this is 140. So from head, from here to here, it's 140 millimeters. Oh. Some people oh, say I got good. a big head, but I don't yeah. think so. Depending on the mood, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I need your help, man. Like, yeah. like, what do you think as well? That I, I mean, there's a few that. I like. Let's try some shape. Okay. Maybe with a round one. Let's see how you look like. Okay, we can do better. This okay. is kind of like hip hop. Oh, these are sick. Okay, bros. I think these are the ones. Okay. These are the ones. But could you do it in this style? Okay. But smaller. Okay. But that material. Of course. So we can see you again in two weeks. That's no problem, man. You know what I mean? Things of quality take a little bit of time, but that's not even that long, really. That's fine, but I do need, I'm going out tonight, so I need a couple, can I take one of these? Yeah, of course. One? So there you have it, the region's first ever optical experimental retail concept. Another couple of pairs to add to the collection, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Hey. Welcome back to DXB Today, where today we're talking all about fashion. And our co-host today is a quirky stylist who's a digital creator as well as a fashion aficionado as well. Please join me in welcoming from Steal Her Style, Irene Steele. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Ferris. It's great to be back here. It's great to be back on the sofa. Well, first of all, you look fantastic. <laughs> Talk you. us through the outfit. What was your thought? The, I've, I've kind of a touch on um, one, well, two, I suppose, spring, summer 24 trends that are coming. Um, florals, I know, in the words of Anna Wintour, groundbreaking, but florals are going to be big news for spring, summer 24. Rosettes, wear them in your hair, wear them on your tops, wear them everywhere. So um, I just added a little kind of rosette to my outfit and bushery hues, one of the main colours for the next season that you're going to see everywhere. You, yeah, that was the, the thought process. I don't know if I'll do the florals. <laughs> Irene, I definitely want to steal your style because I would <laughs> never have thought to put that sort of an outfit together, but it works. It's so glamorous. Now, sticking with the theme of florals, I wanted to ask you, uh, not that long ago, we saw a quick, a brief trend of women wearing a lot of floral chokers. It, I felt like it just came and went. By the time my floral choker arrived, <laughs> I felt like the trend almost left. So chokers and florals, mm -hmm. are they going to come back? Because I'd really like to wear the pieces I ordered. Ash, I am so with you on this, 100, 1000%. 1, I bought them all too, yeah. and I was I'm so excited. It's bringing yeah. me back to my 2010 era, you know, not even 1990s. And then it all went again. I'm yeah. like, no, no, I'm not ready for this to go again. I'm, I'm ready to wear them. Um, I Yes, keep them. They are back. Rosettes, again, were all over the, uh, the previous uh, fashion shows for spring, summer 24. So keep them. And you know, you can wear them in your hair. You can wear them different ways. But yeah, definitely hold on to them. I think you'll be seeing them a lot in the stores right now. Well, I hope you won't mind. We're going to go from uh, the flower around your neck down to the boots because there have been some issues. I, I, a few of my friends have actually been telling me it never gets too cold in Dubai for you to actually wear boots. Do you agree? Absolutely. I literally, any excuse, I feel like January is the one month I can actually wear my jackets, wear my blazers, wear layers and wear the boots. Um, I actually have um, a cream pair too, so I alternate. But yeah, if you, I mean, they're lovely with shorts or with like skirts nice midi skirts if you want to style them nicely um but yeah just try and wear them because it's a short window in dubai and it's not even that cold exactly you know what i do i when i when i drop my daughter off to school in the morning it's probably too early in the morning to wear boots but i just wear them just to get a nice wear out of them i've got no makeup on my hair looks crazy but i put on my leather pants and boots and go and i'm the only person wearing boots over there just to get some use i feel like it hasn't like you know the the it hasn't worn out just as much as i would have liked it I mean, you've given yeah. me quite the mental image. Yeah. <laughs> but Irene, the thing about fashion is it's very subjective, isn't it? It mm -hmm. means different things to different people. It does. And can we dispel some of the ideas that fashion means spending a lot of money on a piece of clothing? It's how you style it, not how you wear it. Right? Absolutely. I think we were just talking about this previously. The whole wearing versus styling concept is huge, actually. And we can thank TikTok for that, which apparently has over 100 million views of this one subject. Uh, so the whole, I suppose, you can go out and um, 
buy a lot of clothes, but it's the way you actually style them. You can spend a fortune on an outfit, but if you don't have that eye, if you, if you can't put it together to like a nice cohesive look, it's just like, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, you know, um, and I think it's all about your personal style and you know how you would accessorize an outfit for example um, how you would turn your basics into a bit of a show-stopping outfit so yeah i think the whole wearing and wearing versus styling is great because this whole thing is actually started people shopping their own wardrobes as opposed to going out and buying outfit after outfit if you can put together some looks that you've had for a long time from your own wardrobe you're doing well um, speaking of you know Dubai fashion I'd like to ask you in Dubai we are not shy to flash our wealth over here I mean the, you know there's a lot of nouveau rich over here and people mm -hmm. like to wear big brands uh, what is your take on that sometimes I find it a little too loud and I feel like it gives out sensitive ego energy quite a bit <laughs> I agree with you and I, I also find like if you for example if you go to Dubai mall mm -hmm. a lot of influx of tourists it's such a you just watch and the logos are streaming in yeah. they're everywhere I'm an it's another trend that's big and it has been big for a while but it's not going away quiet luxury yeah i'm all about the quiet luxury it's more like minimal it smells like, of old money doesn't exactly. it exactly <laughs> it's less in your face logos you know um and it's a bit more the minimalistic simple kind of like french chic i suppose and we all i suppose aspire to you know dressing like a french woman you know but um yeah i i'm not for the whole kind of in your face brands logos and to be honest with you they're kind of down on the the ladder when it comes to the next kind of how people are wearing their clothes anymore and the the trends for next year i think we're going to see less of that and more of uh just kind of yeah like that whole quiet luxury just very sophisticated now, since you mentioned Dubai fashion, uh, earlier on when we were talking, I mentioned that I read somewhere that there could be more than 25 fashion shows this year alone in Dubai. Yeah. Now, with the fashion scene growing, how do you think has this affected our culture? I think, I think Dubai Fashion Week, which has be, been rebranded since last March, I think they're, going, they're on to do great things. I mean, the Arab Fashion Council has been amazing in what it's done already. 21 editions the last seven years. So they are doing a lot for fashion in the region, for showcasing regional designers and kind of putting them on a more of a global platform. And I think uh, the last Dubai Fashion Week, which was October, they, Caroline Herrera was here and she showcased some of her spring summer 24 collection here. And then of course we had Naomi Campbell walking for Malaysian designer Rizman Rouseni. So I think, I think we're going to see a lot more from the Dubai Fashion Week scene here. And I think as time goes on, it's growing and growing. And I think it's, it's doing a lot for the region. I think it wants to be on that global stage, you know, with your Milan, your, your Paris, your, your London and your New York. It's getting to that stage. It has a long way to go. But I think what it's doing for, for designers in the region, it's, it's a lot. It's good. Irene, uh, fashion is a multifaceted thing, of course, mm -hmm. like different people interpret it differently. A lot of people say that fashion is a big contributor to the climate problem that we're having. Absolutely. What kind of advice can you give people who want to be more conscientious when it comes to how they style themselves and how they fashion themselves? Of course, I think, you know, the fashion industry is literally, as you said, one of the, I think it's like the second big polluter, one of the, yeah, the second biggest polluter in the um, in what it's doing so I think um, pre-loved is growing bigger and bigger as the the, the actual days go on you know um, I think sustainability and sustainable fashion brands are becoming well more like you know uh, represented within especially fashion shows Copenhagen Fashion Week is up there as the fashion week to, wa to watch when it comes to eco fashion brands uh, they're like setting the trend for the whole sustainability and the whole fashion sustainable um, market. So I think people can be a bit more conscious in what they're buying, uh, maybe a bit of research into those brands that are doing a lot more for the environment. And again, shopping your own wardrobe. We all have so much in our wardrobe that we don't even see. Um, you know, and remember circular fashion, you know, keeping something in circulation, I think is the way forward. And a lot of brands are getting, you know, you know, 
kind of like championing that at the moment too. So um, there's a lot we can do, but I think we need to do a lot more. So true. I just rearranged my wardrobe and I picked out at least 10 different outfits which I haven't worn for years and put it out right in the front so I make more use of them. So I think it's really important to see the things that we have and bring it back to life a little bit. Uh, Irene, please stick with us. We definitely want to chat with you a lot more, but it's time for a quick break. After the break, we've got Varoin Marwa and we will be learning how to authenticate our designer bags. Plus, we've got a musician in studio, so please don't go anywhere.